Hey guys, we're here making some IPMO. We have these wonderful mix of crickets here. You can see quite a few little crickets. Go down to your local uh, market and pick up some crickets or, you know, pet store, whatever you got. Um, clearly, uh, not everyone can go down and pick up uh, a few kilos of crickets uh, as we can here in Thailand. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can collect insects from your property. Um, you know, you can use insect frass if you don't want to deal with collecting insects, but ideally you want to have insects collected from your property or at least a few from your property to kind of help, you know, gather the microbes that we're after. Once we have all that together, we're going to go over and combine the crickets with rice. So we want to combine about 70% uh, rice to 30% crickets into our rice cooker. We have a big giant dual rice cooker out here. Uh, and then once that's cooked together, that's going to go into our basket. So we have a rice bath or these these nice baskets here. We're adding a little bit of extra um, uh, banana, dried dried leaves here to kind of help um, make so that the rice doesn't go through quite so easy. Uh, and then we're going to put these out in the forest and um, and allow for us to. Um, to gather the local microbes that, that prey on the insects, so the stuff that would normally feed on the crickets and the beetles and the weevils and the other things that we have in our garden. Um, the, this fungi will, will help consume them and act as a, you know organic pesticide that we can create. So um, that's how it's all gonna work and we'll, we'll show you more of that later in the video. Thanks for watching. We have 300 grams of crickets here. You can see wonderful crickets or insects, insect frass, whatever it is you're using. I'm going to throw this in the bucket here, and then we're going to weigh, we pre-weighed this, so we cheated a little bit, but that's okay. Um, we have our 700 grams of rice, approximately, make sure we have a little bit more here, 700 grams, there we go. Alright, so we're going to take our rice, crickets, now we're going to combine them. I'm going to mix them up real good. Try not to throw them across the table like I did. Mix this all up together. You know, we want this to be a good mix. So now we have our, you know, a little over a kilo of, of cricket base with rice. You know, so now we're, this is ready to go. into our rice cooker and then cook until it's about 80% finished and then we'll take the next step from there oh we already got this going right in there and what this does is it sterilizes all the rice and the crickets and everything you'll see infuses that with the stuff and we'll be adding more um, you know, there's obviously more water in here, but we're going to add enough for five kilos uh, of rice and, and insects for this video. So definitely check it out if you're, uh, um, you know, looking to make your own pesticides. All right, so our rice and crickets are done. You can see here we got a nice good mix of crickets floating on top with the rice underneath. Mix that together. I'm going to toss it in there. Your thing there, she's got the skills down here, far beyond any of mine. Boom, right into your bowl. And then we'll mix that all together to make sure we have that same ratio of 30% uh, insects to 70% rice. So let that dry off a little bit. Shake off a little extra water. And then we're good to go. And then we get the next batch. Let's let's fill the, the thing up more. That's why I brought this one over too, so we have extra. There we go. And again, you could do this with insect frass. You don't have to use crickets. We just happen to be able to go to the local market and buy it by the kilo, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> much easier for us to go this route than it is to go try and collect all the bugs but hey if you got little kids or something you know pay them a penny or a nickel per bug you know it's a great way to get them to work in the garden put them to work uh, getting rid of the pests for you and uh, incentivizing them while uh, improving your uh, your pest sprays so what we're going to do is use this basically again similar to IMO 
We're going to collect the local microbes that feed on the crickets and the rice. Um, we're going to preserve them in sugar the way you would IMO2. And then we're going to use that in order to brew a liquid IMO and then create uh, a better pesticide. And you can also take this to an IMO, IPMO3 or 4. Uh, again, you would add um, two cups of crickets per, per kilo of um, uh, uh, bran. So if you're doing it that way. Uh, into a traditional IMO3 type recipe uh, and then do it that way. I know Chris is a big fan of doing the IPMO3 uh, and then 4, but uh, if you're you know in a hurry, um, you can absolutely just do it to an IPMO2 uh, and then to a liquid IMO and then from there uh, apply it to the garden. And then we generally apply it about a tablespoon per, uh, per two gallons uh, in, when we're doing applications. Um, you can go a tablespoon per three gallons if you're doing regular maintenance. If you're treating something, I would certainly go a tablespoon per two gallons. All right, guys, we'll be back with some more info. All right, so now we're filling our baskets here, and they're putting about four to five inches, about quite about five inches of, of uh, insects and rice in there uh, in each basket. So we'll, we'll fill this up one. Here. We'll, we'll watch her fill this one up. Yum. Mm -hmm. And you can use insect frass, you know, locally collected insects is ideal, but if you can't, um, you can purchase them from your local market like we did. And then we're going to take them and zip tie them. So, we zip tie the three sides, and then um, we leave this side open, and then once we collect the fungi from the forest, then we zip tie the last corner. And this allows it to breathe and uh, allows us to collect some of the local mycorrhiza uh, from the forest that are out there. And we just have zip ties, baskets, plastic screen. And this is all, also if we get each, these baskets were like a dollar each, the screen is like another um, four or five bucks. Um, you know, crickets and rice. Where are the crickets run? A kilo? In bot? Sorry? How, how much uh, per bot for kilo for cricket? Rice. The cricket, grasshopper. Grasshopper, uh, one hundred baht for uh for one for one grasshopper, one kilo, one hundred baht. Yeah, so the crickets are uh, about three three dollars per kilo, so it was a little easier than trying to collect the insects at that price. It makes a little more sense, <laughs> especially when you're making all the baskets that we're making for IMO collection. Um, again, this uh, uh, allows you to collect all the local forest my fungi that would eat the insects. Too much, too much. A little bit less. Yeah. Yeah, That's okay. Doing some training here. Getting everybody used to it. So good times. Having fun learning together. Um, we'll have more on this soon. Thanks. All right. We're out here in the forest. As you can see here, there's some pretty thick, pretty thick forest here on the edge of a rice field. Um, and we have nice, nice scrub here. You can see lots of leaf litter, debris. Lots of mycelium, you can see here. This has got little bits of mycelium on it. You can see here, this has got lots of it on it. So we're gonna take some of these little ones and stick them in. We have a corner on this. And we can kind of get our hands in there. Stick it in there. And then also making sure that we're putting this in a nice area with lots of leaf debris. And then taking you know, looking around the forest, and we'll find some more here. So we're kind of looking underneath the leaf litter, looking for stuff that's got mycorrhizal fungi on it. Yeah, so this has got lots of mycorrhizal fungi on it. So we're gonna set that upside down on there so that it dumps spores onto our rice. Same thing with this one, again. Lots of white spores on there, so that's going to collect. Uh, try and find some more. Some of this leaf litter here. I have to be a little bit careful. There are some creepy crawlies I don't want to grab with my bare hand here. We do have centipedes and scorpions here, so we have to be a little bit careful. But, um, you yeah, know, nothing too crazy. Let's see what else we can find. Here, there's some more. You can see some more little bits. 
mycorrhizal fungi underneath here. We'll toss that in. Boop, boop, boop. Right on top of the rice. If it's fully covered like that, a little piece like this, let me just toss that right in there. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Some more. Another little piece. In you go. And you can see here we got just a little bit of debris on top of the rice and the other stuff above. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a, a trash bag over this with some, some wood stakes that we gather from the, from the forest here. That just keeps the rain out of it so if it rains we don't have to worry about it. Um, and we're going to let this sit for five to, to seven days um, and collect, you know, if it's a little warmer, maybe a little bit faster than that. Um, if it's a little colder, you see here some more leaf mold, some more leaf mold. Put that there. Maybe even toss this one inside as well. Uh -huh. All right. All righty. Well. Thanks, guys. Um, we'll be back again here in a couple days to come collect it. All right. See you soon. All right. Here you can see how we place them in the forest. We have the bag on top just to act as a rain shield. And then we have a little bit of leaf debris with fungi and stuff on, on top. And then the rice underneath with the crickets. And the rice is about four inches deep. So you can figure that out if you're in metric land. All righty. So hopefully you guys can see, just took some branches, tied that off. Yeah, so we'll leave this here for, for five days, plus minus, you know, if it takes a little longer, a little less, depending on temperature. So, all right, guys, see you guys again soon. All right, here we are, day five, IPMO, bursting out of the containers. You can see here, we got fungi all throughout the basket. And we're gonna show you a bunch more. You can see all these are just great. And we took a little bit of debris that had from the forest that had fungi on it, just to kind of jump start the seeding. Um, you can do that, you know, help speed things up. And you can see quite a nice depth of fungi here. Um, same thing with the bottoms. I mean, this one's, I mean, literally has fungi popping out the bottom and gluing forest leaves to the bottom of this thing. So, great way to, to collect your IPMO. And that's indigenous predator, uh, pest management organisms. All right, here's another really good one. And we'll go ahead and remove a lot of the bigger debris when we make it into a IMO2. But you can see here, these worked really well for collections. Got a little overzealous with the bark and stuff, but that's okay. We'll take that off. But these worked out really well. This one, it looks like ants or termites or something got in here, but it still looks like it came out okay. I mean, this one's got an absolute mega ton of fungi on it. So, you know, even in a bad case like that, and then... Again, we just, all of these are great. That one maybe has a little bit yellow in it, but overall still fine. And you can see we did 30 collections and we're gonna make a huge batch of IPMO. So we have a bunch of different microbes and these all came from five or six different places um, within about four kilometers of the farm uh, and then some on the farm. So this way we have a good diverse uh, variety of habitats as well as um, different types of plants that had different types of fungi underneath of them uh, so that we could hopefully get a, a broader, broader spectrum of predatory fungi. All right guys we'll be back again soon uh, with more uh, on this. All right so we're gonna open this next one. We're gonna go ahead and stick our hand in here. Pull this out we have a nice little fungal cake here and if we break it open you can see we got quite a bit of fungi in there and the mycelium's all the way through you can see even the crickets in the middle are moldy and see how the see how the molds getting all over the chitin on that cricket leg and all over the legs of that cricket 
that's exactly what we're trying to get. And yeah, there's a little wormy in there or whatever, but that's fine. He'll turn into uh, into food. And again, see the fungi on the cricket there? That's going to end up being what we're after. Alrighty. Here's an example of a really good one. And you can see it nice and white all the way through. A little bit of yellow or green, but not much. And they're just fully, fully caked out here. Yeah, that's a really good one. All right, guys, just want to kind of show you guys a good example of one that's a good keeper. Next, we're gonna crumble up that mushroom mix and then put it in a bucket and weigh it with equal parts sugar. Right, now we weighed out 12 and a half kilos of sugar, 12 and a half kilos of mushroom fungus and insect cricket parts. Now we're gonna go ahead and blend it. So we got, you can see here, all the stuff. Probably tilt this and roll it. Anyways, we're gonna keep mixing this together until the sugar locks out all the oxygen, just like we did with the IMO in the other video. And we'll show you this when it's finished. After you mix those together in equal parts, you just let that sit there and, and finish up for five more days. And you have your shelf stable and uh, ready to use liquid IPMO2. Um, you're going to go ahead and use that to brew up your liquid or IPMO, and uh, we'll, we'll cover that in a separate video along with application dosing and more, and uh, some results videos as well. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you guys again soon. Hit that like and subscribe.